In this video, we will discuss about Oracle Data Integrator 12C, which is a data integration tool from Oracle and basically used in business intelligence and, and analytics applications. So what is Oracle Data Integrator? So Oracle Data Integrator, it right, is a combination of two words. We can define as data and then integrator. So what exactly it means is that it is doing certain kind of integrations between the data, okay? And data, we know about the data stored in different database, maybe an Excel file, maybe CSV file, TXT, Notepad, or maybe in some DB2, Oracle, or MySQL, or any kind of a database, right? So that means when we talk about the integration of data, that means we are integrating some different data sources. One you can define as a source, another you can define as a target. And then you are transferring the data from source to target, right? So that means we are doing a kind of an integration of data, okay? So in a simple word, you can say that there could be uh, uh, n number of uh, sources, and then there could be n number of target, or it could be one to one, depend on uh, the applications or the architecture is there in your organization. Okay, but in a nutshell, you can say about when we talk about the data integrator, that means it is integrating the data. That means it is integrating source with the target, and it is transferring data from source to target. Then what exactly is the need of transferring data from source to target or uh, transferring the data from one database to another database? So I'm sure you heard about ETL, ELT, business intelligence and analytics uh, definitions, okay? If it is not, then let me uh, give us some brief on that. So ETL is defined as an extract transformation and then load. ELT is extract load and transformation. And business intelligence and analytics are some kind of a uh, intelligent applications, okay, which is used to create certain kind of a report or, or can be used for do certain kind of a predictions based on the historical data, okay. So ETL and ELT, so when we talk about Oracle Data Integrator, it is an ELT tool, which is extract, load, and transformation. So what happened that when we talk about ETL, extract, transformation, and load, then we have a mediator in between. That means mediator between source and target. So when we uh, transfer our data from source to target, okay? So in ETL, you will have a mediator system that means in mid, you will again have a separate database, okay? So if the data will be transferred from source to your uh, staging database, you can, the mediator database, you can define as a staging database, and there you can do certain kind of a transformation in your data, okay? For example, you wanted to change uh, the format of some data, for example, you wanted to change uh, the format of your date column, Okay, for example, the, from the source, we are getting the date in DD, MM, YY, but in the target, you wanted uh, your date column in, in MM and YY only. Okay, so you can change or transform the format of your, uh, of your date. Similarly, if you are getting the name as first, second, and third name from the source the data, but in the target data, data, you want only the first name and the last name, okay, then you can transform that data. Similarly, there are a lot of kind of a transformation that could be required. So in a nutshell, in ETL, you will have a mediator database, which is called as a staging database. The data from source to transfer to your staging database, then the transformation happened, and then it loads to your target actual database, where this is actually required. But in ELT, which is a extract load and transformation, that means it is loading the data first, and then it is doing the transformation. So it is hiding the mid, mid layer, right? So when, we, when we, I was talking about the mid layer as a staging database, okay? So it, it save, your cost, okay, because uh, you need a uh, costing for to uh, define uh, the complete architecture of mediator as well, right? Because that is a separate database that is required licensing and then some servers and then maintenance as well, right? So in ELT, you don't, you don't need any mediator database. The data is then directly load from source to your target, okay? And then the transformations happen. So Oracle Data Integrator is an ELT tool, okay? So now let us discuss a few things about the business intelligence and analytics. So business intelligence is a kind of uh, intelligence that we have to apply in our business, right? And the reason is that we have to grow our business. So now how we can apply the intelligence and what exactly mean of analytics? So everything in an industry is depend on the data, right? So data is the backbone of the industry. Okay, so when we talk about the intelligence, we have, we have to apply certain kind of intelligence in our business. That means you have to derive the intelligence from your data. Right from the historical data, maybe last couple of months data, last one year data, it could be last couple of years data. Okay, and 
<clears throat> one basic use of data is about you can create certain static reports. Okay, you are aware about it and how to create the static reports. You can create the reports in your Excel sheet as well. You can create the report using different kind of software as well, SAS, Tableau, and then there are a lot of software. So Microsoft Power BI is there. A lot of tools are there to create a different kind of a reports. Okay, so what it does is it fetch the data from your database. Okay, and based on the functionality or different kind of a graphs and reporting functionalities provided by the tool, you can create a different kind of a graphs. You can graphs and then you can create a different kind of a reports there, right? Whatever according to your requirements. So that is a something kind of a static report where you are reading the data from a database. And then depend on the functionality of your tool, you are creating the different kind of a report based on the data that you're getting from your database. That is, you can say about a certain kind of a static reporting. But when we talk about the analytics and predictions, that means using the data you have to do certain kind of a predictions for your business it is just like you can say about a kind of a guesswork that we do in our daily life as well right for example if you are uh, going to your office in the morning okay then there could be n number of routes to from your home to your office okay but in the morning you know which route is best to go to your office okay there could be a number of reasons that there could be heavy traffic on one route, there could be a, some a maintenance going on your second route, and then a uh, third route could be long, but there would be no traffic, so you will take a less time for that one. Okay, this kind of a guess we do when we in our daily life as well, right? And then when we talk about uh, a shop and marketing, okay, then if suppose that you are an owner of a shop, okay, you are running a shop and then you have n number of products in your shop, then how you will decide what is the exact quantity I should maintain for, for each and every product? Okay, you can't do a guesswork like if thousand number of products are there in, in your shop, then you have to maintain the thousand uh, uh, count of products with the same kind of inventory, right? You have to generate your inventory for each and every product based on your sale, right? If, if some product is not getting sale, okay, then sales is very less, then why should you stop the inventory for that? But instead of that, you have to increase the inventory for a product that is in much demand, in higher demand, right? So to get certain kind of this kind of predictions, okay, you have to apply certain kind of analytics in your historical data, okay, and then you have to derive certain kind of predictions, okay. Like in October or November, there it, it is a festival month, month of festivals, right? And then uh, certain kind of products will be in high demand in that month, so I have to buy or I have to maintain a sufficient inventory for that product, okay. And maybe I have one shop in city one and. Uh, another shop in city two and i am seeing that the demand of a product a is less in city one shop and then the demand of that product is high in city b demand uh, city b right so instead of buying again from the vendors okay i should transfer my stock from city a to city b because that product is not in less demand in city a but in high demand in city b so i can transfer that stock okay inventory from my shop which is in city a to city b all right so this kind of predictions okay you can do uh, based on your data and that is specifically you can say about your historical data so business intelligence and analytics is a kind of a software or tools okay that is used to create this kind of a predictions from your data but in the back end you need a data for that right so for that the data integrated tool is there okay which transform or take the data from source and transfer it to your target so what does it mean source and target right so you all know that okay if i take example okay uh, when you go to uh, your online banking website, okay, and when you go to uh, generate your account statements, okay, so some of the features are there. There, from there you can uh, create your uh, report, account summary or report, okay, of last one month only or maybe last three months only. And but if you wanted to generate a, a, a report of some longer duration, maybe of one year or last two couple of years, then there would be another option. You have to go to some different options, and from there. You can generate the report of last one year statement or two year statements, but if you need a statement which is uh, of uh, maybe of a bit longer period, like for last four year or five years, or maybe you need a statement of last six year back or seven years back, okay, then you have to write to back about that one, okay. So why it is required? Why what does actually mean? So when you go to create a different kind of account, some these or report, why they give you certain this kind of options, okay? So it's very simple that no one will allow you to create the report dynamically from the live database okay because a, a bank has millions of customers and out of millions of customers 10 percent of that if will try to create this kind of a statement from the live database you know that that it will impact the performance of your database and it could hamper the, hamper the business of the online business of, of your uh, banking institution right so for that one 
the data which is historical or maybe you can say old data okay it is transferred to your some other database for this kind of a reporting purpose or to create uh, generate certain kind of analytics and then for predictions okay that is called a data warehouse okay so data warehouse is where you have a data right it is a warehouse of data but it is a historical data okay so whenever a data is generated in your live database it is then based on the schedule that you have done in your database it is transferred from your in live database to your data warehouse database okay this is one of the basic concepts so what does it mean that if you have a live data then no one will allow you to create the reports directly from the live database okay and for that you have a data warehouse right and from data warehouse that means you have to transfer the data from live db to data warehouse so today the data that i got from my sales it is a live data or current data for me but tomorrow it will be an old data right and maybe after a couple of days it can be defined as a historical data right so that data will be transferred to your data warehouse and then from data warehouse we can create a different kind of a report for uh, static reporting or maybe for dynamic reporting or maybe for some kind of analytics and predictions okay and this is the meaning of your source and target database so here you can say that source is your live database okay and then maybe you are transferring your data to your data warehouse that is specifically used for reporting purpose and this is the role of your data integrator where it transfer the data from your source to target right so oracle data integrator is an elt extract load and transform in contrast with the atl common approach tool that offer a graphical environment to build manage and maintain data integration process in business intelligence system so that means there would be some graphical interface or web interface are there okay once you will install your odi and then with the help of that graphical interfaces you can manage the connections between your source and target and then you can initiate the transfer of data from your source to your target okay so this is the approach when we talk about etl there is a mediator in between okay but when we talk about elt there is no mediator it is direct from source to target now let us talk about some basic concept of odi okay so odi component is has uh, four navigators okay when we talk about odi studio okay so odi studio is a development ide for odi so all the development whatever is done in your odi okay it is done with the help of odi studio in odi studio you have four navigators okay one is topology navigator security navigator designer navigator and operator navigator so topology navigator is where we create the connection so we do the connection management okay the connection management between the source and target right so if we have to transfer the data between source and target so first thing we have to do is we have to create a connection between source and a target database right and topology topology navigator is an option in your odi studio where we do the connection management that means we create the different kind of connections when we talk about security navigator it is simply it is used to maintain the users in group we have a lot and number of users in odi and then they are they may be in a separate groups so the users and group kind of things are managed in the security navigator and when we talk about designer navigator this is the main development area where we develop the interfaces mapping and packages okay so earlier to in 11g version uh, it was called as interface now from 12c onward it is, it is called as mapping and package is a grouping of interfaces or you can say package is a grouping of mapping right so when we talk about the development what exactly is development so we have created the connection in the topology navigator between source and target okay but after that when we say that we are transferring the data then as i said you have to do a transformation of your data right based on your requirements and then apart from transformation you have to do a lot of the other development as well maybe you have a different tables in your source and then the tables in your targets are different and then you have to do a mapping between your source and target tables as well from which field of the table from we will will go to which field of the which table of the target database right so that means you have to do a certain kind of a mappings in tables as well the mapping of the fields of the tables as well right so these kind of activities okay uh, you can do with the help of designer navigator okay and then the last one is the operator navigator the operator navigator is maintain the session the session in the sense when you create a connection between source and target and then when you establish the session for transferring the data then a session is created now if you wanted to monitor the session if it is running or not since how long it is running how much time it take uh, to transfer the data between source to target for a particular session okay so these kind of activities you can do uh, uh, do with the help of operator navigator which actually does the session management right 
right? And then uh, their main components are ODI agents. Okay, so execution of your code. So ODI studio basically is to design the connect, design the connections, user group, and then do the development. Okay, and then session management. But when we talk about the actual execution of your code, so execute. Actual execution of your code is done by your ODI agents. So you have three kind of agents in ODI: standalone J2E agent and co-located standalone agent. Okay. So basically, agent is a Java-based process. Okay, it is a process which execute your code. So standalone agent is a single agent. That means you have a single agent which is executing for the execution of code. Okay. So when we talk about J2E agent, this is a Java-based agent. Okay, which is deployed on your web logic. Server. So when we talk about a standalone agent, then you don't need to install your web logic. Okay, it will not deploy on the web logic. You will have an independent process that you can start or stop with the help of a script. But when we talk about J2E agent, then you will get a complete web logic framework, and then you will have a managed servers, and your Java agent or you can say your ODI agent will be deployed on the managed servers. Okay, and this is specifically used in your production environment. So when we go to production environment. In ODI, then we use the J2EE agent. And third one, which is introduced in 12C, co-located standalone agent. It is similar to your standalone agent, but the difference is that it has been incorporated with the some web logic framework. That means it will be a standalone agent, but it will come with some basic functionalities that you can use of the web logic framework. For example, you can start from the agent with the help of WLST, and you can use certain more functionality of the web logic framework. So in that shell, standalone agent and co-located standalone agent almost same, but co-located is come with the some basic functionalities of web logic framework. Okay, and these two uh, agents you can use in your uh, non-production environment. But but when you talk about the production environment, then we should go with the J2E agent. So next is ODI console and ODI repository. So ODI console, as I said, it is a graphical interface which is deployed on your logic server, and with the help of console, you can do a lot of activities. Right. And for example, you can view edit, create different kind or delete different kinds of objects that you have created. You can import, run, stop, restart your scenarios. Okay. So what are the scenarios? So scenarios is a design to put a source component, mapping package procedure variable into production. Okay. For example, I, as I said, you can uh, develop the code in designer navigation there you can define different interfaces. There could be n number of interfaces, n number of mappings, there could be n number of packages. Okay. So th those you can pack. When you are transferring your code, okay, from non-product to uh, or pre-product to production environment, okay, that is called a scenario. And then important functions of your ODI console is data lineage and flow map. Okay, this we will discuss in the uh, part two or maybe part three when we will go for a detailed discussion in advance uh, topic. Okay, and then you can do an important uh, important export of your repositories. Okay, so what exactly is repository? So this is an important topic when we install your ODI, okay, it creates two repositories in your database. One is called master repository, and second is called worker repository. So when you initiate the connection, or we can say when you start your ODI studio, okay. So after starting the ODI studio, you have to connect with your repository. Either you have to connect with your master repository, or either you have to connect with your worker repository based on the kind of a work you are going to do. Okay. And so repository are you can say about some schema and database tables in your database okay and this is created when you install your odi with the help of repository creation utility so what exactly is master repository and what exactly is worker repository so master repository store objects created using topology and security navigator and work repository store objects created using designer and operator right so you have two kind of a repository one is master so when we talk about topology and security right so we have discussed about that one. So topology is used to create the connections and then security is used to store user element groups. So if you're doing any work in topology navigator or security navigator, the, all the information will be stored in your master repository. But if you're developing any kind of a code, okay, and for all the information related to your session management, it gets stored in your worker repository. So thank you for watching this video. And if you like this video, then make sure to subscribe my channel. And then soon I will come up with some more interesting videos. Thank you very much.